All right, so what we'd like to talk a little bit about today is some continuation on our discussion of correction factors and how they're done. We had a discussion earlier about the formulas that are used that are given to us by the SAE. We talked about two different formulas. And both those are working off of atmospheric changes to derive a correction multiplier. What we'd like to talk about today is how we monitor those weather changes in our dynamometer equipment. And what we have here is our typical sensor box. This is where all of our electronics is handled. And that would be whether you have a chassis dyno, uh, an engine dyno, or, or even one of our super bench flow benches. Uh, we use the same basic electronics in all three of those devices. On this box, inside, we have electronics. We have a circuit board here. And on this circuit board, we have a pressure transducer. And that pressure transducer is what we use to monitor barometric pressure. So as the weather changes, the barometric pressure changes, and we're going to be able to monitor those pressure changes with that piece of equipment on that board. For the air temperature and the humidity, we have a device we call a temperature humidity probe. And that's this piece right here. It plugs in on the side of the sensor box. And in here, we have a temperature and humidity sensor. These two devices are separate, and they produce a voltage. And the sensor box electronics converts that voltage into air temperature and humidity values. And then, as we saw in the formulas that we were looking at, we're going to take that humidity value and turn it into a water vapor pressure number, which is going to be used in the SAE J1349 or J607 correction formulas. So while you're dyno testing throughout the day, as long as that probe is in your airstream, in your test cell, or if you're testing on a chassis dyno, somewhere in your atmosphere where you're testing, it's going to monitor and, and change the air temperature and the humidity readings the dynamometer sees throughout the day. The same with the barometric pressure. As long as the sensor box is within reasonable distance of your test apparatus, you're going to have a constant monitoring of weather changes. So once those devices are actually calibrated, which we do at the factory, you don't have anything else to do. Now, sometimes our customers like to be able to check that. What I normally recommend is that you have at your facility some weather station type apparatus. You could have a simple thermometer, uh, perhaps a, a digital gauge you can buy at any hardware store that shows you the humidity or the barometric pressure. And what I want you to be aware of about barometric pressure is there's two things that are going to affect it, two primary things. One is weather changes. The other is the altitude that you're at. And the altitude is the one thing that many people get mistaken upon. When you listen to the weatherman or you read a barometric pressure off of a simple device you might buy at a hardware store, it's going to most likely give you relative barometer. What that means is they've given you the barometer reading in pressure units, probably in inches of mercury in, in uh, most of the North American test facilities, maybe kilopascals or bar in other places around the world that use metric units. But nevertheless, you're going to be given a relative barometer. And what I mean by that is, here where we are at, we're at 6,000 feet altitude, Colorado Springs. At 6,000 feet altitude, if you think of the atmosphere as like water, it has weight, it has um, density to it. And the further you get to the top of the atmosphere, the closer you get to the surface of the atmosphere, that would be somewhere out there in outer space, the less volumes above you, the less mass, the less pressure. And what I'm trying to explain here is that altitude affects the pressure reading. But the weatherman and many weather station apparatus give you a barometer reading that is corrected back to sea level conditions. That means that if you're standing here in Colorado Springs right now at 6,000 foot altitude, the weatherman might say it's 30.05 or 2994 inches of mercury pressure. But that's not the real pressure. That's called relative barometer. And we would not want that value in our dynamometer. 
Our dynamometer needs to know the absolute pressure, the station pressure. And for that, you have to factor in the atmospheric uh, pressure due to altitude. Where, where we're at at 6,000 feet, the actual pressure here is around 24 inches of mercury, even though the weatherman tells us it's 30. A good rule of thumb is for every 1,000 foot of altitude, you're going to lose one inch of pressure in mercury units. Okay. So if we're at 6,000 feet and the weatherman says it's 30.0, subtract 6 inches, you got 24.0. That would be our normal barometric pressure reading here. And that's really what the engine sees. And that's why it doesn't make any power. And by putting 24 into our correction formula in the electronics, we're going to see a big multiplier applied to our measured power. We talked about that in the earlier session. So if you are putting in barometer, always think of this. Am I at sea level? If I'm not at sea level, then what the weatherman tells me isn't what I need for my dynamometer. People ask, well, well, can I buy a reference device that will show me that? Yes, we used to recommend people buy mercury column barometers, and we have one here at Superflow. But the environmentalists don't particularly care for us having mercury in large columns anymore, so it's very difficult to find one of those to buy. But you can buy other instruments. Many racers simply go to companies like RaceAir, and they buy a little weather station, a little portable weather station. They take it to the racetracks with them. They use it for jetting the vehicle at the racetrack. You can use that little weather station for your dynamometer application as well. There's no reason why you can't use that as your reference, because it will give you the correct barometer reading that you need for your dynamometer system to work properly. So to recap. Sensor box, electronics, we have a weather station built in here. Barometric pressure on the board inside, an atmospheric temperature and humidity probe to keep monitoring of that on the outside. And then barometric pressure, which is the one thing that most people get confused by, you got to remember, always think about where you're at altitude-wise, because that's going to affect the actual pressure you want to put into your system.